The Gram stain procedure was developed by Danish physician Hans Christian Gram in 1882 while researching methods to stain the bacterium Streptococcus pneumoniae in lung fluid smears. He flooded slides with the purple stain crystal vial, which he then fixed in place with a mordant, iodine, and finally washed away excess crystal violet with ethanol. He found that Streptococcus cells took up the stain and appeared purple while other bacteria were colorless. A few years later, a pathologist named Carl Weigert added a final step of counterstaining with safranin to render colorless cells rose red. Graham himself never used counterstaining. The Graham stain has been the most widely used bacteriology stain for over a hundred years and is almost always one of the first steps in bacterial identification because it differentiates one major group of bacteria from the other, the Graham positives that stain purple from the Graham negatives that stain saffron and red. Items needed for the Graham stain are a staining set containing crystal violet stain, fresh iodine solution, 95% ethanol, and safranin stain. A water bottle for rinsing. A tray to contain the rinsate. A clip for holding the slide. An optional wax pencil for marking the slide. A Bunsen burner, striker, and gas source. An inoculating loop. A 12 to 24 hour broth culture of bacteria. A clean glass slide. Lens tissue. Absorbent bibulous paper. Immersion oil for the microscope. A microscope with a 100 times oil immersion lens. Before you begin, clean a glass slide with alcohol and a paper towel. Finish cleaning it with a piece of lens tissue. Using a wax pencil, inscribe a circle on the top of the slide about the size of a dime. Next, light the Bunsen burner and sterilize your inoculating loop. Then cool the loop near the flame to maintain sterility. Be sure to mix the culture well and aseptically transfer one loopful of broth culture to the center of the circle on the slide. Spread this out by gently moving the drop in a circular motion. Spreading the cells out gently will help to maintain their characteristic arrangement. After approximately five minutes, the smear will dry. Compare the still wet slide on the left where you can still see a liquid drop visible to the dry smear on the right, which appears slightly shiny, but flat. Once the smear is dry, Heat fix the cells to the glass by passing the slide briefly through the flame three times. The slide should be held in a slide clip to avoid injury. For staining, place the slide onto the tray. Add a few drops of the primary stain, crystal violet, to cover the smear. Stain for one minute, then gently rinse with water. The physical properties of gram-positive and gram-negative cell envelopes determine whether or not crystal violet stain will be retained within. Both groups have an inner or plasma membrane. Gram-positive cells have a thick peptidoglycan cell wall on the outside that gives these cells rigidity. Gram-negative cells have a much thinner peptidoglycan cell wall and an additional membrane called the outer membrane surrounding that. When crystal violet is added, it enters both cells freely and remains inside as cells are washed with water. Next, a few drops of fresh iodine solution are added to cover the smear. The purpose of the iodine is to act as a mordant to fix the crystal violet in place. 
After one minute, the slide is again rinsed with water. When iodine is added, it complexes with and precipitates the crystal violet molecules inside the cells. Water rinses the iodine off the outside of the cells, but does not disturb the complexes within. The smear can now be decolorized with 95% ethanol. This is a strict, time-dependent step that should last for no more than 10 seconds. Ethanol is added drop by drop until no more purple color runs off the slide, or 10 seconds, whichever occurs first. The slide is then rinsed immediately with water. The addition of ethanol shrinks and tightens the thick envelope of the gram-positive cell, ensuring retention of crystal violet iodine stain complexes. Gram-negative cell envelopes are thinner and more prone to disruption. They become lysed by the addition of ethanol, and their lipid-rich outer membrane dissolves, allowing crystal violet iodine stain precipitates to flow freely out of the cells. After a water rinse, gram-positive cells are still purple, and gram-negative cells are colorless. As cells age, they often become leaky, so gram-positive cultures grown for more than 12 to 24 hours may contain older leaky cells that will show a false gram-negative reaction. This is the reason cultures for gram stains are never grown for more than 24 hours. The last step is the addition of the counterstain, safranin, to the smear. After one minute, the slide is rinsed a final time with water. The counterstain safranin enters both gram-positive and gram-negative cells. Following the final rinse, gram-positive cells appear purple, despite the presence of safranin, because of the dark purple color and heavy concentration of crystal violet. Gram-negative cells, which appeared colorless prior to counterstaining, now are colored a light rose due to the presence of safranin. The slide is dried by blotting gently in absorbent bibulous paper and placed in the microscope and viewed without the addition of a cover slip. To see the results of this gram stain, click on the link for the interactive microscope setup sequence.